Hey guys, so today I'm doing a video review on this lens that was sent to me by Makey. That is the correct way to pronounce it. I verified with their representative through email, so I was pronouncing it wrong this, this entire time, so my apologies. Anyway, this is the Makey 35mm f1.7 lens, and you will notice that is it is very, very similar to the newer 35mm f1.7 lens because it is the exact same lens from the exact same company. Uh, Makey says that this one is updated, however. It has, number one, a metallic ring around the front, and number two, it has improved glass. So let's go ahead and check it out. By the way, if you see my wife in the background, she is cooking lunch and also vlogging for her channel. If you're interested in that, I'll post that link down below. I was here first and then she just decided to run into my shot. Uh, so let's go ahead and unbox and check out what comes in the box. All right, so here is the box that it comes in. 35 millimeter APS-C F1.7, 49 millimeter filter thread multi-coated, same info, another picture on the back. It's a pretty small box for a lens, I have to say. They include a nice little uh, rain jacket material pouch, a cleaning cloth, mine appears to be dirty, a warranty card, that's probably where the dirt's coming from, and the lens itself. So. This is very, very similar. The unboxing is probably 100% identical to the newer lens, the same 35 millimeter f1.7. Here we are. I remember this lens quite well uh, with a different brand on it. So metal lens cap that just kind of uh, glides on and off, which is kind of nice. So this one is a little different. There is a, um, a nice accented ring around. So you have a little bit of that chrome polish. You have your focusing ring, which is very smooth. And it gives you quite a range of focus. I mean, this is almost a uh, three quarter turn, I would have to say. Then you have the aperture ring at the very bottom. So it goes from f1.7 there to f22. Around the back, metal mount, no electronics because this is a manual only lens. And just to show you how big it is, it's not very big at all. So that is the lens. You can probably see the aperture blades on the inside. Let's see once I, there, there's the aperture fully open and closing down to f22 so very cool so let's go ahead and see what this looks like mounted on the camera and as you can tell it is very small it's very similar to the kit lens in size so if you are traveling with it it is very easy to take with you and when you use the focus ring the lens does extend slightly but not by much, maybe a centimeter, if not less. The focusing ring is very smooth from end to end. However, there is slightly more resistance to one side, I've noticed, as there is to the other. So there's almost like a point where it's a little bit more sticky, but not necessarily sticky. It's still pretty smooth all the way through. Uh, this is not something that will affect your shots in any way, but just something to note. It's not equally smooth all the way through. There's a point where it's a little tougher and then it becomes smooth again. The metallic ring on the front matches nicely the metallic ring around the back of the lens. It also matches the lip of the E-mount on your camera. So this looks very nice on the camera, I have to say. So now let's go ahead and take a look at some sample photos and videos using this lens and I tried to get a couple of nighttime shots. Here we go.
Overall, I'd say that for $80, you're getting an amazing value. You're getting a very fast lens that's small, lightweight, easy to take with you, easy to focus. Uh, and you're getting the 35 millimeter focal length, which on a crop sensor camera, I think is ideal for both portraits and street photography. When you compare it to the Sony SEL 35 F1.8 lens, which is $400, you might ask yourself, is this lens much worse? Just for fun, I took two portraits of my wife uh, just a couple of minutes ago. And so here is the shot from the Sony SEL 35. And here is the shot from the Meiki. 35 millimeter lens and side by side they look almost identical I mean you'd be hard-pressed to really tell the difference obviously one has autofocus and optical steady shot and is better for video but if you're just looking for a good all-around lens that you can manual focus and that does great in low light this is certainly something that you should consider there are a couple of issues with this lens however number one I noticed that there is some weird ghosting flaring going on when you are shooting into bright light sources so into the sun or into like a bright lamp at night i haven't seen this with many other lenses in fact any other lenses so i don't know if it's a coating issue if it's just the way that the lens is designed it's kind of cool but just something that you should be aware of if you are buying this lens for professional use for example number two as i mentioned this before the focusing is pretty smooth throughout but it does get a little more resistive at a certain point that might be just my copy so it might out might not affect you if you purchase this lens uh, but something to be aware of number three it is not the easiest thing in the world to adjust aperture it's very smooth and declicked so on occasion you can bump it on accident but also when you are trying to switch apertures uh, it is a very small ring because the lens is so compact so you have to really pay attention to what you're doing. The last thing that I will mention is this lens does have more barrel distortion than the SEL 35. And that's something that I noticed in the pictures. It doesn't look too crazy or too bad, but it is there. So if you are concerned with barrel distortion, something to note. Overall, I'd say that this is excellent value for money. The newer lens, which is on Amazon and I reviewed months and months ago, is currently hovering at, at around $110 to $120. This lens is about $80, and you can argue that it is better because, well, it has a silver ring and it has updated optics. In my opinion, the two lenses are about the same. I wasn't able to see much of a difference in image quality, but I haven't had my newer lens for months now. I sold that long ago. So anyway, uh, that is going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. If you have any questions about this lens or other lenses for the e-mount system, be sure to comment down below. Thank you guys for all the support and all the likes, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.